You know, when many Magic the Gathering players think of common cards, they seldom think of broken designs that need to be banned. And yet, it's happened more times than you might think. And I don't just mean in Popper. In the original Mirrodin block, the artifact land cycle needed to be banned from standard due to the broken design of the affinity mechanic. These lands, basic mana providers that also happen to be artifacts, also proved too frightening for modern and are banned there. Interesting to see indestructible versions of these cards created for Modern Horizons 2, but... More on that in a minute. But it isn't just older designs that have seen bans at the common level. Only a matter of months ago, Growth Spiral was banned from Standard. That's a common. And though originally printed as an uncommon, Cauldron Familiar also needed a ban, and that was reprinted as a common in Jumpstart. So it's not just rares and mythics that need bannings. And nowhere do we understand this better than in Popper, the format of all commons where top tier decks can be built in paper for as low as $40, and where not one but two new common cards from Modern Horizons 2 may have just broken the format wide open. Before we begin, a quick word about this video. This video is brought to you by Raycon. You know, summer is here and Raycons are perfect for going outside and hiking, enjoying nature, hanging out at the beach. But I'm not gonna do any of those things. I'm staying indoors and listening to some of my favorite programs on my wireless Raycon earbuds. Programs like Game Nights. Sure, I could use the seamless Bluetooth pairing with my multitude of devices and listen to Game Nights as I watch the action unfold on screen, but why do that when I could just turn my screen off and listen to the play-by-plays? There's no higher definition than that of my imagination. And now in my Raycons, I can picture it as if I were really there. The scintillating commentary, each and every spell cast in that exciting commander game. Raycons are super comfortable and come with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Oh wow, did you hear that sound effect? I bet there was a wild card animation or other special effect that was paired with it. So cool. Oh, oh, what's that? Jimmy has been mana screwed again. The audio quality is so high that I feel like I'm actually there watching him not draw a land. So go to buyraycon.com slash Talarian community or click the link in the description now to get 15% off your order and use your Raycons while listening to the newest episode of Game Night starring Jimmy Wong, Josh Lee Kwai, Ashlyn Rose, and famous Hollywood celebrity and or musician. Or just put on a playlist of the Booster Box game and imagine what the prices were. Or go outside, whatever floats your boat. The power is yours. And with Raycons, they have a 45 day free return policy so the risk is zero. Check out Raycons today and thank you Raycon for sponsoring this video. Just last year, I warned of the huge impact that Fall from Favor was going to have in Popper. Giving Blue the Monarch ability is just a mechanic and color combination that was too much for Popper, and I was right. By January 14th of this year, in an emergency ban list update, Fall From Favor was banned from Popper. It lasted less than two months, and considering Modern Horizons 1 had given the Popper format Arkham's Astrolabe, another common that needed to be banned in multiple formats, let's just say that whenever a new specialty set lands, Popper players meet it with both excitement and dread, as new toys for the format often bring with them at least one card that is just broken and is going to tear apart the format until its eventual banning. So I'm here to tell you that Modern Horizons 2 doesn't have a single card in it that is so broken that it might require a popper ban. Nope, it actually maybe has two of them, at least. The first and most broken new common to come charging into Popper from Modern Horizons 2 is Chatterstorm. It's Storm in green at common. It also features squirrels. Chatterstorm is one in a green for a sorcery that reads, create a 1-1 green squirrel creature token. Storm, meaning when you cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. This card is nuts. And if any card were to wreak havoc in Popper, this is it. There's a reason that so much of the Popper ban list is Storm cards. 
like Empty the Warrens, Temporal Fisher, and Grape Shot. Storm is quite possibly one of the most broken mechanics in Magic's history. So much so, the scale we use to measure how reasonably reprintable a mechanic is is called the Storm Scale. Well, now we have a Storm deck in Popper. Taking advantage of an also recently printed common, first day of class, we can have each of our squirrels enter the battlefield with plus one plus one counters on them, and also grant them haste, meaning that the storm count to make a lethal army of killer squirrels is not as high as you thought it was. And when cards like Manamorphous and Lotus Petal are, yep, you guessed it, commons that are legal in the format, Chatterstorm is poised to cause many popper brewers to put on their thinking caps and have a brainstorm, which is also popper legal. But I'm not too worried about Chatter Storm. Popper is a resilient format with amazing deck diversity, and it also has a common by the name of Delver of Secrets that is poised to keep those nutty squirrels in their place. Delver decks, especially Mono Blue, had fallen out of favor recently. But that which is dead can never truly die, and there's no better answer to an army of squirrel tokens than Delver main boards like Echoing Truth and Dispel. Not to mention Demir variants that enjoy a good Echoing Decay, all of which significantly worsens Chatterstorm's chances of overrunning the format. Which is not to say that it won't likely become a new top deck, but the brilliance of Popper, beyond of course the fact that these and just about every other top deck can be put together for about $40 and never rotates, is that it has such a diverse and resilient meta. Honestly, with such diversity of decks, it is exceedingly hard for any one new card to truly take over. Though, if I had my eye on a potential problem for the new set, it wouldn't only be Chatter Storm. It would also be the sneaky reprint of that other broken mechanic. Yep, Affinity. The second most powerful new common from Modern Horizons is a strictly better Mirror Enforcer, Sojourner's Companion. Mirror Enforcer is a 4-4 artifact creature for 7 with affinity, meaning it costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. In Popper Affinity, which is quite possibly my favorite Popper deck, dropping those banned everywhere else artifact lands, some chromatic spheres, a prismatic lens, a frogmite or possibly two, and you can cast yourself a 4-4 oftentimes as early as turn two, all without having to pay anything at all, not to mention the massive draw Thoughtcast gives you, Icker Wellspring provides, and the absolute LOLs of eating all of that up with an ATOG and then flinging it at your opponent's face. Yes, yes, I know optimized lists use Team or Battle Rage instead. Leave me alone. I choose to run slightly less optimal builds. It doesn't mean a thing if my ATOG doesn't have that fling. But now the deck has been given a strictly better Mirror Enforcer, as Sojourner's Companion has all of that, plus the ability to land cycle for artifact lands. The very lands you run and often could really use a little fixing from, given Affinity itself is a deck running four to five colors. Affinity was already a powerful deck in Popper, and oftentimes small advantages can go a very long way. Sojourner helps make Affinity lists ever so more effective and reliable, and when possibly paired with the next set of commons from Modern Horizons 2, may make this little Aotl the real broken design to come out of the set. I say that because if I were to point to the third scariest card to hit Popper out of Modern Horizons 2, I'd be looking at five of them. The Artifact Lands, Banned in Standard, Banned in Modern, the basis of affinity itself in Popper. Not to mention seeing use and play in Boros Monarch and a few other builds. Well, why not take those overpowered cards and make them a dual land? and while we're at it, make them indestructible. They did. So here's the trade-off. Unlike Sojourner, Mist Vault, Dark Moss, Goldmire, and Dross Forge Bridge aren't strictly better printings of the artifact lands. They do different, in many ways better, things, offering multicolor mana and being indestructible, but they come with a severe drawback. They enter the battlefield tapped. However, they are common and completely popper legal. I think a lot of people forgot about these cards as soon as they saw that they came into play tapped. But popper already trades the slowing down of entering tapped for dual mana with the life gain lands, which are sprinkled throughout several different builds in the format. Here, we have the advantage of an artifact land and the indestructibility that makes formerly feared artifact hate such as Gorilla Shaman or Core Sanctifiers all the less impressive. 
of. And while I don't think that these lands will take the format by storm, I do think they carry with them the risk of making a few key decks ever so slightly better and a few key answers ever so slightly worse. They're the shiny new trinkets to keep an eye on for sure. But there's more commons from Modern Horizons 2 that are making a wave. Though likely far from the possible ban-worthiness of Chatterstorm, number four on my list is the green hero of Kamigawa, the little froggy that could, Jade Avenger. Jade Avenger is a mana of any color and a green for a frog samurai. It's a 2-2 with Boshido 2, meaning whenever this creature blocks or becomes blocked, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. A clear callback to the famous Chub Toad of the ancient era, Jade Jade Avenger can be cast off Burning Tree Emissary, making it a tasty treat for Mono Green Stompy. The advantage here is that Bushido is a deterrent to blockers. Bushido 2 means that anyone trying to block this is blocking a 4-4, and it can be swinging in as early as turn 3. And again, if brought out fast with Burning Tree, probably not swinging in alone. Key Stompy effects like Rancor could make blocking this even more of a bad matchup. And since Bushido boosts defense as well as attack, your opponents will be hard pressed to put up much in the way of answers. I guess they better hope it dies to removal, even though that still means Rancor will go right back to your hand. But we are now at the lower end of the list. Did you like that? How this is a best commons for popper list that works in reverse? So I don't have too high hopes for our Samurai Chub Toad, but I do think it'll see play. And there's another card I'm keeping my eye on, one for my favorite type of deck that never quite gets there, but I always hope does. No, not Merfolk, this is Popper. So of course, I'm talking about Aristocrats, and of course, next on the list is Nested Shambler. I love this card. It's a single black for a zombie that reads, when Nested Shambler dies, create X tapped 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens, where X is Nested Shambler's power. Home is where the heart was. This is simply amazing value for a sacrifice style aristocrats deck. Not to mention that it is yet another card that fares exceedingly well with Rancor. But Rancor isn't the only power boosting common that sees Popper play. And given how great that payoff is, I'm going to try and trigger Morbid with any number of other Popper sack outlets, then cast Hunger of the Howl Pack, swing in, and if it still survives, eventually sack for an army. A fun deck I used to play was also Popper Zombies, and this is a zombie. In fact, it might be the best one drop zombie be in all of Popper. Well, I think Aristocrats' lists will be the top of the tier thanks to this exciting addition, and perhaps other new brews will unfold to make use of it, I still will enjoy jamming games with my beloved less-than-optimal decks like Popper Zombies. But that's what I always loved about Popper. It's Legacy Light, where you play with cards from throughout Magic's history and cards that, as this video has established, are powerful and breed great deck diversity and yet still, still end up being complete top tier here non-rotating decks for about $40. But even though Modern Horizons 2 doesn't officially release until the end of this week, it has already been on Magic Online for a week. And while early event results are not an indicator of the true meta just yet, and things of course will continue to shift, we can clearly see that Chatterstorm decks are not taking over the format. In fact, if you start looking at some of these results, you'll see that Affinity is probably going to be a little more dominant now. And so how awesome is it that Modern Horizons 2 didn't give us a broken new common? Well, at least not in the form of Chatterstorm, but maybe just gave us a new cool combo deck, adding to the already diverse meta game. Keep your eyes on Affinity, though. Will Chatterstorm really break Popper like Fall from Favor and Arkham's Astrolabe did? Is there another sleeper common no one has noticed yet that is poised to split the format in two? Or will Popper continue to grow and flourish both on Magic Online and in the newly returning paper events at those select game stores where it is safe to reopen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And special thanks once again to Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash Talarian community or click the link in the description to get 15% off your order. Wow, these are so crisp and clear, it almost sounds like Jimmy is calling me daddy. Oh no, look out, Josh Lee Kwai is casting another Shadowborn Apostle. I did not expect that. Can I call you back? I, I just ran into an old friend. Professor, you paisley old rogue! <laughs> <laughs> Teferi, you guy that I like.